and we are rejoicing and glad in it. Thank the Lord for you that are here that are tuning us in. And uh, we're still checking a few things out here, make sure that we're on here. Uh, thank the Lord, I have to make sure that my microphone is set up. All right, God bless. I think that we're good here. Uh, holy greetings to you, and God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is Scott Bradley, and this is the Rivers of Life Ministry. We're grateful for you that have tuned us into this day, a day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. Uh, we thank the Lord that he is yet uh, blessing us. We thank the Lord that he is yet smiling upon us as we are going through this pandemic uh, throughout the world. But yet God is still in control and God is still on the throne. Uh, I want you to know that. I want you to know that our comfort and our hope is in him. Uh, I want to encourage you, that of you us, of course, to hit the share button. Let other people know that we're on. I think that I've got a thought-provoking message for you today that's going to bless and encourage your heart. So please hit the share button and let us know where you are viewing from. Of course, I want to know where uh, our audience is. Uh, we, we've been... Uh, getting people that have chimed in, of course, from all over the country, all over these United States and other parts of the world, whether this is a live presentation or you're viewing the playback, uh, it always blesses my heart to know that uh, we are being bless a blessing to many people all over the world. Also, what I want you to do, I want you to uh, let other folk know that we're on, again, hitting the share button, uh, and I want to uh, share something with you before I go into the depth of the message today. There's, there's something that's been on my heart uh, that has really been, oh, I, I guess disturbing, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, with our government and with our nation. Brothers and sisters, we should be aware of the fact that, you know, you just can't move out. Uh, and I'm seeing what's happening in, in some of our southern states there where uh, they are uh, opening up the state, uh, telling people that they can go ahead on and uh, go to, you know, places like the barbershop and the the uh, tattoo parlors and, and the uh, health clubs. And they're opening the state up, in other words. And the reason why they're doing this is because they want to get the economy going. What this basically says to me is that you're placing people uh, money ahead of people's lives. I find that disturbing coming from our government, from, from our leaders, especially in, in, in uh, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, Florida. I was looking at something last night on television where in Vegas, uh, the mayor of Las Vegas wants people to come back and start gambling and all that kind of thing. People are placing finances, money ahead of human lives. There's no indication that this pandemic has slowed down. Uh, not in this country, at least. There's no indication that they found a cure. Uh, there's still, and I'm listening to the doctors, and I really wish that, that the uh, 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 president would let the doctors talk when he does his press conferences. I really wish, wish he would let the doctors talk instead of he talking, because in many cases, I don't think he really knows what he's talking about. He was the one trying to push this malaria uh, uh, antidote uh, for this, and it, it didn't work. In, in fact, the, the, the reactions and the, the, uh, um, uh, 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 the things that, that happened, uh, side effects is what I'm trying to say, proved to be worse. So we need to be praying, people of God, we need to be praying we need to be uh, not so quick to get back out there in main society. Wait this thing out. God is in control and God is on the throne. Thank God. All right, I've got a message that I want to share today. Uh, and it has to do with even the attitude of us as, as Christians. Now, one of the things that I've noticed in my travels, and, and particularly in, in recent years, and then since this pa pandemic has come upon us, uh, one of the things I've noticed is, is the, uh, how can I put this, the attitude of Christians, which gives me to know that in many cases, many of us that profess to be Christians are shallow. Shallow. We have no depth. We have no depth. Uh, it reminds me of, of what my pastor, my late pastor, or my, my former pastor used to say years ago, that a Christian can be no stronger than his prayer life. Unfortunately, what we have or seem to be lacking among the people of God as a prayer life 
And as a result, it, it, it does not give us a strong relationship. Uh, we become shallow in our thought process. We become shallow even in our uh, definition of holiness. Uh, a friend of mine, he's gone on now. His name was Wolfwork. Uh, that was his last name. He was president of the uh, Historical Society in the Church of God in Christ. And he used to have a saying that there's a difference between biblical holiness and perceived holiness. Many of us are walking in perceived holiness. Uh, and we've stuck to the rules of it. We, we've stuck to the rules. And I'm finding that in many cases, people follow these rules because they're afraid if they violate the rules, they're really afraid of going to hell. Uh, I'm not talking about sin now. That's different. There are some things that we hold to, some traditions that we hold to, some teachings that, that unfortunately uh, were, were birthed out of ignorance that we hold to. And sometimes we even know that they're ignorant, but we still hold on to them for fear of repercussions, for fear of repercussions. If I, if I don't continue to do like this, you know, uh, I'm going to continue to get, I'm going to get sick. The Lord's going to get me. Uh, some folk may even seem when I was coming up, they made it seem like the Lord was hiding in the bushes, just waiting on you to do something wrong so he could jump out there and get you. That's not the type of relationship that the Lord wants to have with his people. The Lord wants to give us a loving relationship and an assurance that as we walk with him, he's going to strengthen our fellowship and our relationship with him, and we're going to get to know him. I would venture to say, brothers and sisters, that many people that profess to be saved, that profess to be Christians, really don't know the Lord. Yeah, yeah, really don't know the Lord. Oh, you know about him, you 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 pray, you 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 shout, you dance in church, you do all of the things that 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 we think is, is all about church, but we don't have an intimacy and a relationship to really have a confidence in him. Uh confidence is gained in our association and our fellowship. This is why even in this pandemic, some Christians are panicking. There's no need to panic. God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but God has given us power and love and a sound mind. Now think about that. Power, love, and a sound mind. When things are going the way they're going, a sound mind is what we need. Keep your head, keep your head. Don't lose your head. Don't fly off the handle. So I wanna read something to you here from the scripture and I wanna talk about the subject of a uh, shallow Christian. Uh, praise the Lord. I want to go to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, and I want to start reading uh, at verse, I'm sorry, the third chapter, and start reading at verse 1. And I, brethren, Apostle Paul says, could not speak unto you spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, yet now are able. Uh, he says further, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, another I am of Paulus, are ye not carnal? And again, he's, he's talking about this, this uh, 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 division here that people had as to who exactly they were with. Uh, I'm with Paulus. I'm with, with uh, uh, Paul. I'm with, with other, you know, various ones that they associate themselves with. And a lot of time what happens is that we have a tendency to even associate our denominations above our relationship with the Lord. First of all, let me say to you, and, I, and I'm not knocking denominations. I belong to a denomination, of course. I'm a Pentecostal member of the Church of God in Christ, of course, and, and glad to be there. But my point is this. When the Lord sees us, he does not see us as Baptists, as Methodists, as Pentecostals, as Catholics. That's not how he sees us. That's not how he views us. That's not how he establishes a relationship with us. And sometimes our legalisms can keep us divided. And Paul says, if you all say, one of you with Apollos, one of you with Paul, you all are carnal. You all are stuck in a, a carnal, shallow mindset. The relationship with the Lord supersedes religion. The relationship with the Lord supersedes uh, organization and rules. The relationship that God wants to give to us is so that we would walk confidently with him, knowing him. Not quick to judge other folk, not quick to condemn other folk, but knowing him. I have a saying, and you all have heard me say this on numerous occasions, and that is this. I do not live right to be saved. I live right because I'm saved. Meaning that there has been a change of heart. There's been a change 
of attitude. The, the, walking with the Lord has given me a fellowship and a relationship with him that encourages me to continue to walk with him. And because I walk with him, the Bible said, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. When I repent of my sin, if I fail, and I'm subject to it, I'm not going to put errors on here and tell you that I have not sinned. Of course I have, as, as of you, uh, all have sinned. But in my walk with God, yes, I have sinned. Yes, I have fallen short. Yes, I have made mistakes. And, and, and I don't even like to use that term mistake because a mistake is when you intend to do the right thing and wind up doing wrong. Some things we just intentionally do. But the fact of the matter is that the reason why I repent before the Lord is because I've offended him. The relationship that I have with him, and I realize, Lord, I've done the wrong thing. Lord, I've said the wrong thing. Lord, I've thought the wrong thing. I repent because I realize that that has offended you. And I don't want to mess up my relationship with the Lord. So I live right. I live accordingly. I live according to his statutes. I live according to his commandments. I live according to what he has said. Now, you must understand that that's not what saves me. And I'm saying to you, that's not what saves you. Uh, living a uh, 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 good, living right, living living uh, a, a good holy life is not why we're saved. We're saved by the grace of God. It's by grace, Apostle Paul says, you are saved, and not by works. Works basically uh, determine rewards in heaven, you know, even the simplest of, of uh, 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 works. You know, uh, sometimes when I see people on the corner and I give them some money, that's being recorded in heaven. Uh, or I'll do charitable things, charitable organizations, or do something to help my fellow man. That's being recorded in heaven. You see, but that's not why I'm saved. That's not what saves me. You know, uh, ministering the gospel as being called by the Lord Jesus Christ, even doing these uh, things here. That's recorded in heaven, sharing the word, encouraging people to walk with God, teaching and preaching. But that does not save me. I am saved by the works and the grace of of the Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore I follow him. Now, I want to deal with this again. When I'm talking about shallow Christians, because again, a lot of time, many of us uh, are still walking in legalisms and walk in fear. I find that a lot of people, a lot of Christians are walking in fear. They're afraid that if they do something wrong, they're going to go to hell. I, 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 I'll tell you this, and, and you can judge me any way you want on this, but I don't fear going to hell. I don't fear that. Uh, I know that hell is real. And let me make that plain. I'm not trying to take the fire out of hell. I couldn't if I wanted to. Hell is real. And there's plenty of people are going. And even Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction. You're going to find a whole lot of travelers on that, on that road. Straight and narrow is the way that leads to life. And you're not going to find a lot of people on there. Uh, Christians that really know Jesus Christ, as opposed to those that profess to be Christians, are few and far between. You know, there's not a lot of people have religion, but they don't have a relationship with the Lord. And this is what we have to understand. In many cases, we are carnal because we have no depth in Christ. Notice what Paul said. I, I, can't, I can't feed you with meat. You can't handle it. You all you have too much of yourself in the way, too much of your pride in the way, too much of your arrogance in the way. And a lot of time God said, I can't really do with you what I want because you're resisting me. You're resisting my plan for you. You're busy trying to tell me what you want to do and not listening and saying yes to what I want you to do. I know what you're capable of. I know what you can and cannot do. And you're therefore, it ought to be the, the, the desire of a person, a Christian uh, or a, a saint of God, a follower of Christ, to say, yes, Lord. I may not always understand, but I say, yes, Lord. Shallow Christians, why are we shallow? We're shallow because in many cases we're caught more to traditions that were taught out of ignorance. And now let me say this. I'm not faulting uh, many of the older generation, particularly amongst we as a black people. But I will say there, many things they just really didn't understand. Now, I'm not saying that they weren't saved. I'm not saying that they were carnal. In fact, I admire many of our older saints and even those that have gone on, because there was a standard that they held to. And, 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 and as we mature, as we mature in Christ, and this is what makes the difference, as we mature, some things that we found were, were convictions were not necessarily sins. And sometimes when you mature, the conviction doesn't always bother you anymore. I'll give you an example of this. Uh, I know that uh, when I was uh, coming up uh, as, as a youngster, uh, 
and I played sports, and, and I love sports. I still love sports, you know. Uh, there were certain ones in the church that told me that if I really wanted to walk with the Lord, I should not play sports. They told me that, you know, in fact, I know of a guy, and I sometimes get disturbed when I think about it. I know of a man who was an excellent baseball player, and uh, the scouts were looking at him, but the church forbade him, and he didn't go. He didn't, he didn't take the contract. He didn't sign with the pros and had the opportunity because there were certain ones in the church that felt like playing sports was wrong. Now, how would this come about? How would this come about? Well, sometimes the Lord will convict an individual for various reasons. And I want you to listen to me because you may learn something here. Sometimes the Lord will convict an individual, a person, over certain things. Uh, let's say sports. Suppose that fellow, when he played sports, he became too intense. He, he lost his temper. Uh, he, he would do things that he would curse. You know, he'd say things he shouldn't say. And so what will the Lord do? The Lord will convict that person. So you can't play. Now, the problem is, he takes his conviction and tries to put it on the whole church. And says, the Lord told me don't play sports, so therefore none of y'all play sports. It ain't up to everybody. Every one of us that really means business with God, in our, in, our, in our early years in walking with Christ, we found that we had a lot of convictions. The Lord would not allow us to do certain things. The Lord would not allow us to go certain places. The Lord would not allow us to say certain things. But as you begin to mature, as you begin to get closer to the Lord, and mature. When you begin to mature, uh, you find that a lot of those convictions that things that bothered you didn't bother you anymore. Why? Because of, well, number one, it wasn't a sin in the first place. The Lord convicted you because of what it would cause you to fall into. But as you begin to mature, now you realize that those things that bothered you really don't bother you anymore because you've now begun to develop a maturity in Christ. And that's why a lot of time there are churches I know of that, that hold to convictions that go way back years and they're outdated and they're, they're not scriptural. And yet I know people today that it's certain things they just will not do because they were told don't do it. And they, they really never come to maturity. They never come to maturity. They're bound and stuck in that box. But as I said before, a lot of our traditions and a lot of our uh, 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 teachings we're out of ignorance. Now, again, I'm not knocking and saying it in a, in a negative manner. I'm simply saying that uh, when you learn better, you should do better. Some things that we said when the scripture weren't in the scripture. Or sometimes we misquoted the scripture. Or sometimes we quoted the scripture out of context. Or sometimes we used the scripture and the scripture didn't even mean what we said it is. And I'll give you an example of this. And I'm probably going to get some feedback on this. But I'll give you an example of this. You know, when I was coming up, it was forbidden for women to wear pants in the church. You don't wear pants. And they had one scripture. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination to the Lord. First of all, you have to understand that when that scripture was written almost 3,000 years ago, there were no such things as pants. Nobody wore pants. Women or men. Secondly, the reference was being made to homosexuality. The woman should not put on a woman, the man should not put on a woman's garment. The woman should not dress like men. It's basically what it's saying because that was something that was practiced by uh, the heathens. And in reality, when you look at Deuteronomy and even the law of Moses, a lot of things God forbid the people to do because it was something that other nations did as a part of their worship. And some of their worship was sexual. Some of their worship uh, was, 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 was sexual deviance and homosexuality and, and other various things. And so Moses, as he began to write that, forbid them because the Lord forbid them to take on the practices of the heathen nations. And basically what that dealt with was homosexuality. But again, we don't know the history of it. We have not studied. And brothers and sisters, you must understand there's a big difference between reading and studying. And so in our early churches, early 20th century churches, the, uh, many people looked at that scripture and they saw it one way. And so they preached against women wearing pants. And then some of me went, the britches, y'all, sister, wearing these britches, you're going to wear them britches straight to hell. And, and oh my God, some of the things they would say. Well, the reality was most of that teaching was out of ignorance. But when you learn better, you should do better. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm of this persuasion, and y'all can think what you want, but I'm of this persuasion. Ignorance can be helped, but stupidity can't. Yes, ignorance can be helped. What is ignorant? Ignorant is not knowing. But when you learn better, do better. You come out of ignorance. But if you're going to learn better and still do the same thing, that's no longer ignorance. That's just stupidity. And it keeps you in bondage. And why do you do that? Why do we, 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 we hold on to those things? Because we're afraid if I violate this, I'm going to go to hell. That's what it boils down to. 
You're afraid you're going to go to hell. If you're in Christ, and it goes back to what I was saying earlier, if you're in Christ and you have a relationship with him, you don't fear going to hell. <laughs> I preach this thing if y'all let me. <laughs> you don't fear going to hell. Now, again, I'm not saying that folk ain't going. But I have a relationship, and my relationship with the Lord has assured me that walking with him and, and in fellowship with him and talking to him and he talking to me has assured me that I'm on the right path following him. And I don't present an arrogant attitude before the Lord. Humi humility, humble before the Lord. See, some of us will never be able to get to certain places because of certain things that are in our minds, certain, certain traditions that are in our minds. And that's why it limits our movement and limits our ministry. You know, uh, I remember years ago, and again, on this very subject of pants, I had a, a Nigerian couple come to my church and uh, when I was pastoring at the time, and uh, the woman came in pants. Uh, now, again, she had no such traditions in her country. And, uh, you know, they uh, uh, I made mention of it, not to her directly, but I did say something to the people about pants. And I guess she felt like she wasn't welcome. Now, I look back on it now, I realize it's really stupid to me to go through those changes. But again, that's the way I was taught. That's the way I was raised. And uh, as I learned better, I did better as I learned better. But uh, other things, even certain types of music. So we were told that we can't listen to any music except this gospel music. Uh, and again, as I began to mature, I began to realize there were other arts that I could enjoy and listen to. Now, again, there's some stuff I wouldn't recommend because it's nasty and profane. I wouldn't recommend Christians listening to that. And for that fact, anybody listening to that stuff anyway. But there were some music that I enjoyed, some some arts that I enjoyed because, again, uh, it had nothing to do with my walk and my relationship with the Lord. So notice, oftentimes because we are stuck in tradition or shallow, we can't always hear the Spirit. The Spirit may tell us to do something and we resist it. Because it's outside of our religious teaching. You know, Jesus had most of his trouble from religious folks. You know, because Jesus violated the tradition. Jesus' disciples uh, ate food without washing their hands. And the, and the religious leaders had a problem. Jesus healed on the Sabbath day. And I always find this ironic that Jesus healed a woman on the Sabbath day. woman that was bent down. And the, the, the elders and the, the, the uh, religious leaders got mad. And even took out a sermon. Man, man, he can work six days. We can come six days and get healed. But don't come on the Sabbath day because that's the day of rest. Jesus said the Sabbath was not made for man. Man was made for the Sabbath. Or the Sabbath is not and vice versa. In other words, you all have taken this and you've made it a tradition. And you bound people up with your traditions. People are not free. And that's what a lot of time tradition does. The Bible says for us to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Why did Paul say that? Because traditions and the laws have kept people in bondage. Christ has set you free. And because Christ has set you free, I'm not bound with the legalisms. Now, understand, and let me clarify something here because I don't want nobody to get the wrong impression. That does not give you the liberty to just go off and cut a fool. Because again, I believe that if we're going to hold and follow Christ, there, there's standards that we ought to follow. There's a lifestyle that we ought to follow. There's a way that we ought to follow. We ought to follow the example and the way of Christ. Even the Lord said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now again, it goes back to what I said earlier. There's a difference between perceived holiness and biblical holiness. What is perceived holiness? Some of the traditions that we say, some of the rules that we set down, some of the things we bind people up with, some of the things that we, we restrict in certain areas and tell folks that they cannot do this. You know, I, I remember years ago I heard something that I thought was kind of strange. Uh, but they were talking about young people, as the term they use, courting. Uh, you know, and they said, y'all not be courting. If you, you know, and one woman testified, said, uh, if you want a wife or you want a husband, the Lord will show you. Well, I believe that's true. But, you know, sometimes you need to know the person. You know, just I'm saved, you saved, and we get married. That's the reason to get married. That's not always the reason to get married because we're not compatible. We don't like the same thing. It is not a matter of you being saved, you ought to like it because I like it all a lot. But people that are saved like the same thing. That's not even true. That's not personality-wise. Everybody does not have the same personality. Some folk have different color preferences. Some folk like red, some folk like blue. Doesn't make one more saved than the other because they have a preference. Some folk like certain foods. Some folk uh, like certain styles. So, you know, it, it doesn't make one more saved or less saved than the other because it's like the folk I knew of down in, in Oklahoma. All they wore was white. 
They were the white robe saints. And all they wore was white. They wouldn't wear no other colors. And I know other folk, all they wore was black. They wouldn't wear no, no uh, other colors, nothing to complement it. Just, you know, and again, it's a tradition. It's a tradition. But there's no scripture to justify that. Now, I'm not knocking it. If that's the way you feel, fine. If that's your conviction, more power to you. But there's no scripture to justify that. There's no scripture that says that the people can only wear white, only wear black. Now, the Bible did say modest apparel, meaning this, that you ought not be dressing like wild and crazy. But I think that you ought to present yourself that, you know, that there's, a, there's a thing that I learned. People respond to you by the way you present yourself. Over time, tell our young men, pull your pants up, young man. Fix your hair, all them wild, crazy braids. People will respond to you by the way you present yourself. If you present yourself crazy, with your pants falling down, that's the way they're going to respond to you. That's the way they're going to respond. So, so just getting back to the original point, I know I've jumped up here and I'm, my time is running out. But again, uh, notice, we, we become resistant to the spirit of the Lord. In many cases, the Lord cannot lead us because our traditions have gotten in our way. You're shallow. You're shallow in your thought process. You're shallow in your walk with God. You really don't know the Lord. And so as we begin to walk closer to him, as we begin to pray, and again, I'm finding a lot of shallow Christians really don't pray. They just have the rules. They have the rules down. He's saved. I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to, because I'm saved. You know, but you have no convict. You have no rule. You have no spirit. Uh, I remember years ago, and I find this a lot. And you must understand, I've been in ministry 45 years. I've traveled the length and breadth of America and uh, foreign soil as well. Uh, some of our early churches, some of my churches in my early ministry, I found that they felt like the only way to have churches, you got to shout and dance. You got to be shouting and dancing. If you ain't shouting and dancing, the spirit ain't moving. Uh, I recall uh, a, a, a conversation I had with a mentor of mine, the late Apostle Richard Hinton, and I always thought about this. I asked him, does he always feel like he preached under the anointing? If you knew Richard Hinton, he was a preacher, a dynamic preacher. My God, he could, he could preach so until the house would fall. But he said to me, he said, Yes, I feel I always preach under the anointing, but the anointing is not always as heavy. Meaning that sometimes God would put him in a teaching mode. And he wouldn't tune up, he wouldn't squall, he would teach. And I found even in my ministry, 45 years of ministry, and again, he said this to me when I was a youngster, about 18 years old, uh, but I think about it often then, now that there's times when the Spirit of the Lord will come upon me to teach. Even these presentations here, I'm in a teaching mode. I'm not squalling and, and preaching and having an organ behind me. I'm teaching. And I believe the anointing is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach and to teach. But again, the anointing is not always as heavy. And I'm saying that to say this. I knew of churches, and I remember one particular church, and I won't mention where it was on the name of the church, but they had a sign in there. We come to church to church, and we don't leave church until we church. And I find a lot of times folk that spend most of their time shouting and dancing, and I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking it. Shouting and dancing is good. I enjoy a good spirit-filled Holy Ghost service like that. But most of them, all they have is a shout and a dance, but they have no prayer life. They have no spirituality. They have traditions and rules. And so they leave that church shouting and dancing, praise the Lord, but they won't put on a pair of pants. They won't uh, listen to any other kind of music other than gospel. They won't be because they're so fixed into the tradition because they fear if they don't do that, they're going to go to hell. Christians should not fear going to hell. Now, let me reemphasize this because, again, I want you all to know hell is real and there's plenty of folk going, you know. But Christ, because I've accepted Christ, because he's become the Lord of my life, I don't fear that. I'm looking forward. Matter of fact, I'll tell you, I was just thinking this morning with my aching knees and <laughs> some of the other things that are happening in my body. I'm looking forward to going to heaven to get that new body. Hallelujah. Get that new body. Praise the Lord. No more sickness. No more disease. No more pain. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to it, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, let me finish this up here. I got a couple of minutes here. Uh, sometimes the Lord has to break us down because of our stubbornness has to break us down because in many cases I'm finding that a lot of us suffer with anger and resentment. And Apostle Paul said, as we read our text scripture today, you all are carnal. You all are still carnal. You all, I can't give you any meat. 
I have to feed you as babes with milk so that you mature. And I want to challenge you, brothers and sisters, to mature in the Lord. Don't remain a babe all your life. Something is wrong with a child that remains a child. Everything that God created has growth. Everything that God makes has growth. Now, you know, I was always quite proud of my son. My son is 30. I think he's 33 now. He's married. He's got a child. You know, he's a grown man. But I was always impressed with him as a boy. As a young boy, he could read. He, he, he learned to read even before he got to school. Uh, he, was, he was smart in class. Oh, my God, school. He was very smart. And I was always very proud of him. And he would say things to me, look, Daddy, 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. That's what he would say as a, a, a 4, 5, 6-year-old. But now at 33, if he came to me still saying, look, Daddy, 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus Something's wrong with him. The boy is stuck. He hasn't grown. He has not matured. And brothers and sisters, I'm challenging you. If you're still stuck on the same old thing and bound up with traditions and bound up with rules and laws, you're stuck. You're shallow. If you're still afraid, you say that you're saved, you're still afraid that if I do something wrong, the Lord's going to get me. You're shallow. You have not matured. And so now what you must do is establish a relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Our time is up. Establish a relationship with the Lord. Start by praying. Start by spending time in prayer. I'm talking about on your knees. Praying. I'm not well. I pray all over the course of the day. I'm talking about spending time in devotion. Spending time with the Lord. Start there. Read His Word and know His Word and study His Word. There's a difference between reading and studying. All right, our time is up. God bless. I hope that you all got something from that. Hope that you got something from that. Listen. Let me know where you're viewing from. Just simply type in where you're viewing from, and uh, I believe that uh, we're going to be encouraged by that. Also, if you would like to donate to this ministry, you most certainly can. You can go to our cash app, Brad2538 is where you would go. Or you can go to our website, uh, scottbradleyministries.vpweb.com. Uh, to give you the information there on how you can donate. Our mailing address if you'd like to mail us something and help us in what we're endeavoring to do. But God bless your hearts. We thank God for you. Until next week, this is Scott Bradley saying God bless you. I love you. I hope and I pray that you got something out of the word today. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood.